How many of you have heard of something called a Tarloff cyst? Odds are, if you've seen enough MRI reports of the spine, you probably have because up to 4.6% of the population has one. So let's talk about it. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 36-year-old female who came to my office complaining of lower back pain. A few months ago, she lifted her child out of the car seat, twisted her back, and had sudden onset of right-sided lower back pain. She's tried to treat it conservatively, but it still hurt, so she ended up getting an MRI of her lower back. And here are the findings of the MRI, which shows Tarloff cyst down in her sacrum, also known as perineural cyst. What the heck are they? And are they causing her symptoms? Let me first get on my soapbox by saying that when a provider goes through the results of a patient's MRI of their spine, that they should have a pretty good idea of what they're talking about. Sometimes when we relay results of imaging to patients and we don't necessarily understand it ourselves, we can instill a sense of fear in patients until they find out answers. And I'm not expecting every provider to understand MRIs of the spine, but we often order them and I want to help educate on what these things are so we can better educate our patients. The thing is, is that over 90% of Americans will present to their primary care provider at some point for acute lower back pain. Most common causes are muscle strains, muscle spasms, and even disc issues such as a disc tear or a disc herniation. Sure, there are lots of other causes of acute lower back pain, but those are the most common that we see. And common things being common, a lot of these issues self-resolve. So an MRI scan of the lower back is only indicated if there are certain red flag signs. If a patient has neurological symptoms such as new numbness, weakness, trouble going to the bathroom, fevers, or even a history of cancer we suspect may have metastatic cancer. Otherwise, we defer imaging for approximately six weeks while a patient tries conservative treatment. The pain is persistent despite conservative treatment measures such as physical therapy and over-the-counter medications, then we typically order an MRI. Then you order this MRI and then you get all these words in the report that you may or may not understand. Spinal stenosis, foraminal stenosis, lateral recess stenosis, facet hypertrophy, mild disc bulge, disc herniation. What do all these words mean? And what's important and what's not? Another thing that you may see on these MRI reports is a word called a Tarloff cyst or a perineural cyst. And that's what I want to focus on the discussion for today. If we look at this MRI on this patient, what we see are three cystic things in the lower sacrum, and those are called Tarloff cysts, but they're not causing her acute lower back pain. Actually, her acute lower back pain is caused from her right annular tear at L4 and L5. And annular tears are often easily managed by conservative treatment. But what's really alarming to patients on most instances is when they see the words Tarloff cysts or cysts on their spine because if it's a cyst, it's got to be something worrisome, right? The answer is usually not. Studies show that only about 5% of Tarloff cysts actually cause symptoms, which means over 95% of them that are found on imaging are completely incidental findings, or meaning they don't cause any symptoms. But it's important to understand what they are and how we can explain it to patients, how patients can understand what's going on with their back. There are sacs of spinal fluid that sit around our nerve roots and are most often found down in the sacrum or the tailbone region. Inside of them is cerebrospinal fluid. This is the same type of fluid that surrounds all of our nerves in our back and our brain. They can vary in size from big to small, and they can even be in other spots of our spine. And we're not exactly sure what causes them, but we know that they can be a result of trauma as well as inflammation around the nerve. We do see them more often in women, and we do see them more often down in the sacral region. They are extremely common in people with connective tissue disorders, such as Marfan syndrome and those with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. It's important to take a good history and physical examination because in some instances, they can potentially be a source of symptoms. They are slow growing and they can even cause bony erosion over time. It's actually one of the hallmark features of a Tarloff cyst. Because they grow so slow, they can cause changes in the bone structure over time. So the point is, it's not going to be a source of acute pain or pain that happens all of a sudden. It's going to be a description of pain that's slow progressing over time. If it is determined that the Tarloff cyst or perineural cyst 
is a potential source of the pain, there are some treatment options that are available. Larger cysts are more likely to cause symptoms and can be a source of chronic lower back pain, headaches, numbness, weakness, or even sexual dysfunction and bowel and bladder dysfunction. It's because the cysts can grow to a size that actually can compress the nerve. If they are found to be a source of pain, we usually try to treat them conservatively because managing them surgically can be somewhat challenging. Medications are utilized such as anti-inflammatory medications or neuropathic medications such as gabapentin or Lyrica. Steroid injections may reduce pain and inflammation. Sometimes we even try aspirating the cyst or sticking a needle into the cyst to aspirate the cerebrospinal fluid inside. It's one of these potential treatments do have risks associated with it, so it's important to talk to your provider. In rare instances, even surgery is recommended. Surgical options really depend on the location of the cyst and what neural structures are around it. Sometimes we can surgically excise the cyst, and other times we can aspirate the cyst and inject a fibrin-type glue to close off or wall off that cyst to prevent it from recurring. But in most instances, these cysts can recur. That's one of the reasons why treating these surgically can be kind of challenging. Because symptomatic Tarloff cysts are often in the region of the sacrum, those nerves are important for bowel, bladder, and sexual function, so treating them can potentially be high risk. It's especially the case in patients with connective tissue disorders because healing from surgery can often be challenging in these patients. So back to our patient. She was symptomatic of an L4-5 annular tear and these Tarloff cysts were actually asymptomatic and a completely incidental finding. We treated her for activity modifications, physical therapy, and anti-inflammatory medications for her annular tear and she ended up getting an epidural injection which helped resolve all of her symptoms over about a six month period of time. Reassurance was provided on her asymptomatic Tarloff cyst and she has done markedly well and recovered completely. I do wanna point out that a lot of patients with symptomatic Tarloff cysts can often get blown off for their symptoms. I think it's because we see it so much that we often just presume that they're an incidental finding. It's always important to examine your patient Talk to your patient and understand the etiologies of what can be symptomatic and what may not be a problem at all. Just because 95% of them don't have issues doesn't mean that we need to ignore the other 5%. Listening to patients and problem solving is a critical characteristic in a good medical provider. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.